A red ball starts off from point P with a uniform velocity Vr given as the square root of 3 minus 1 parallel to the y-axis. When it reaches point Q, it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal x-axis. OPQ will be an isosceles right angle triangle with the angles QOP and OQP being 45 degrees. At this point, the ball does not stop but continues to move forward with the same uniform velocity. As the red ball begins traveling further from Q parallel to the y axis, a blue ball is released while the red ball was at point Q. Let's watch this again. and the red and blue balls collide at point R. The angle the velocity of the blue ball makes with the x-axis is 60 degrees, so the angle ROQ will be 15 degrees. We have to find the velocity of the blue ball with respect to the ground and the velocity of the blue ball with respect to the red ball. From the geometry of the figure, angle OQR will be 135 degrees and the angle ORQ will be 30 degrees. That way, the angles of the triangle ORQ will add up to 180 degrees. Now we will draw the vector diagram of the velocities and using these angles, compute the velocity of the blue ball VB. In the triangle ORQ, we now know all the angles and we know the length QR as that will represent the velocity of the red ball which is given to us as the square root of 3 minus 1. Using this, let's draw the vector diagram. This vector diagram is to scale, meaning that in the time the red ball takes to get from Q to R, the blue ball takes the same amount of time to get from O to R. So these lengths and directions for VR and VB correspond to the magnitudes and directions of their velocities. First, let's take a look at the formula VB with respect to R equals VB minus VR, which is the formula for relative velocity which we are familiar with. Rearranging such that we have no vector subtraction but only vector addition, we have VB equals VB with respect to R plus VR. This would mean that VB is the resultant vector obtained by the vector addition of VB with respect to R and VR. We now know all the angles here. That is, this is 15, this is 30, and this will be 180 minus 45 or 135 degrees. And we know the length of VR or the red vector. So let's use geometry to find the other lengths. We use the law of sines in this triangle. We know the angles and we know the length of VR is the square root of 3 minus 1. Let's find the magnitude of V B with respect to R or the green vector first. So we have V B with respect to R over the sine of its opposite angle, sine of 30, equal to Vr over the sine of its opposite angle, 
that is sine of 15. And with this, we obtain the velocity of B with respect to R as 1.41 meters per second. This means that the relative velocity of the blue ball with respect to the red ball is 1.4 meters per second. And from the red ball's perspective, it assumes itself as stationary with the frame of reference fixed to it. And it sees the blue ball approaching it along this direction, which is 45 degrees with the x-axis with a constant speed of 1.41 meters per second. And finally, B collides with A as it approaches A. But to a person on the ground, A is moving parallel to the y-axis and B is moving at an angle of 60 degrees with the x-axis and they eventually collide. Now let's compute VB, the velocity of the blue ball, with respect to the ground. Again, we use the law of sines and we get VB over the sine of its opposite angle, that is sine of 135, is equal to VR over the sine of its opposite angle, which is sine of 15. And we obtain the velocity of the blue ball, VB, as 2 meters per second, making an angle of 45 plus 15 or 60 degrees with the x-axis. So you can see that once the vector diagram has been set to scale, the physics ends there, and we use geometry and trigonometric law of signs to obtain the unknown values. When two bodies collide, we can use the vector diagram to set up the graphical relationship between their velocities and the relative velocity. Then using the law of signs, we could determine the unknown values. Mm -hmm.